Hello friends, it's Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. I'm so glad you could join me here today. Today I have a little Valentine treat for you. This is made with Authentique's really mushy romance Valentine collection. This is the 6x6 pad. I use the 12x12, but I thought we'd just flip through very quickly so you can see all the beautiful patterns in this pad. It is just scrumptious. And I love the black, white, um, pink um, color palette with just little pops of green here and there. Really great sentiments, fabulous images. It's just a wonderful collection. And look at this pink wood grain. That's my favorite. I just love that pink dots. So everything you need to make absolutely gorgeous Valentine's this year. So sweet. And um, the images are just so shabby, chic, and romantic. I just love them. Anyway, I also used the 12x12 cardstock component sheet, which has so many wonderful little elements on it. This is a framed shaker card, and I just love, I'm on a jag lately for making shaker cards. I just love them. They're so much fun. This one measures five and a quarter by seven and a quarter with a one quarter inch spine, lots of mixed media. You probably will still see little flecks of ivory paint on my fingers from having shabbied this up. And I do have a tutorial where we'll put this card together very quickly together. So this is a Primo resin frame painted with ivory and then spritz lightly with a little homemade um, mica spray. I just use Perfect Pearls in water, put it in a spray bottle and spray that on. Then I brushed over the top with a little vintage photo just to make these beautiful finials pop. These are little birdie flowers from AC Moore. These are their candy and sangria roses along with Rosalind roses in, I think it's called Swiss Mocha. Um, and then really reasonable ribbon pearl pink taffeta, a little prima tassel that I found in my stash and then lots of machine stitching and dry brushing with paint. So this is just so sweet. You could set this out. It stands up nicely. You could set this out on your mantle or side table for Valentine's Day. So let's open it up and look inside. Like most everything I make, um, I love to decorate the inside as much as the outside. So I've used this beautiful rose lattice pattern on the inside created a little pocket with um, some not so fussy cut elements and some scraps and then tucked a little Ghirardelli dark chocolate in here because hello people it's Valentine's Day there has to be chocolate then on the bottom I've just created a little shallow pocket um, and I will tell you very quickly this I made the because you ask me this all the time I just joined two five and a quarter by eight and a half inch panels of cardstock together with half inch score tape and if well I covered the back actually so you can't see but here's the joint right here and as you can see it's very hard to even tell that you've joined the paper together and then I just lay on my scoring tool I score at seven and a quarter seven and a half and then again at seven and a quarter which left me this little flap down here that I turned into a shallow pocket so quick and easy and I did add little hinges behind the flap to um, give us room to tuck inside and then here we've got this fun little tag with a belly band here's a little tea bag wallet all cute and shabby chic and you can write a little note inside because there's plain pink paper here and then this little sweet little metal spoon that I picked up um, I don't know if I got this one online or if I picked this up at a yard sale and then a little honey stick. So the little belly band is just so sweet with these little birds and a doily. This is from the component sheet and everything just tucks inside neat and tidy. So hang around. We are going to build this card together. This is a really quick tutorial. Um, I did a lot of the prep work in advance so I don't think it's going to take very long for us to make this and then you can adapt this any papers any patterns even birthday cards or whatever um, so hang around we'll get to the tutorial and we'll get our craft on see you soon
Okay, so let's get started with this card. And the first thing you wanna do is create your base. And this is two sheets of five and a quarter by seven and a quarter, well, five and a quarter by eight and a half cardstock that I've joined together with half inch score tape, then scored at seven and a quarter, seven and a half to fold this little top fold card base. I've lined the inside with papers from the collection and then I left the little extra bit that you get when scoring on the end and this creates a little pocket. And now we're gonna add the elements to this. We'll start with the top and these are just scraps that I had left over and I'm gonna actually turn this so that the stripe goes the opposite way because I think that looks interesting. And we're just gonna add adhesive around three sides of this and place it right here. Make sure I'm in frame. Let me come down a little bit. Okay, my camera is taller than I am. So I have to stand on tiptoe to see where I am. Then I just loosely fussy cut this image from the three by four cut aparts and we're gonna adhere this down, just like that. And this just helps separate this image from the background. I like the way those black stripes act sort of as a, as a mat for that. And then I've got a little Ghirardelli chocolate and I just wanna make sure that it's gonna fit in my pocket. This is one of the minis. And it's just gonna tuck in like that, just a little tab sticks out. And normally I wait for that glue set up. It's harder to do when you're doing a live video. And then just one of the little punch out sentiments from the component sheet. And that finishes that off. So I'm going to take this out, let that glue set up a bit, and then we'll put that back in when we're all done. Now to fill the pocket, we're going to make a little tag. So let me set this aside. This is a little metal spoon that I picked up. Um, and one of my little junking adventures. And what I've done here is cut from black cardstock a four and a quarter by six square of black cardstock, cropped the edges with my crocodile punch. Then I cut another layer of four and an eighth by five and three quarters of the pink. And then from the scraps I had, four by five and three quarters. So this has to be four and seven eighths, five and seven eighths. Hold on. Yes, the pink is five by se five and seven eighths. And then the pattern is five and three quarters. So that forms the basis of our little tag. And then we've got from another scrap, we made a belly band. And just to help this contain the items that we're gonna put inside. I cut a couple little pieces of um, scraps and made these little wings or hinges, whatever you wanna call them. And we're just gonna add a little adhesive here. And this is gonna run, I wanna make sure I have my text going right side up, although probably not that big a deal. This is gonna go right in the center, just like that, easy peasy. All right, and then I just took a little tiny, this is a three inch doily. I think I got this from Bow Bunny. Yeah, and I punched out this image from the component sheet, backed it with a little chipboard, and we're just gonna adhere this part on our belly band. And you wanna make sure that you only add your adhesive. You don't wanna lop over onto the um, base of your tag, because if you do, then <laughs> you can't put your item in. So this again, this is a little scrap of black cardstock, and I cut this to measure, I guess it's about six and three eighths by four and an eighth, and then I just uh, cut down the other papers to fit. This is one of the images, you and me, and then um, I had a little extra piece. I scored it at three and a quarter and six and three eighths. And then I had this little flap left to make a little pocket. And I fussy cut another little image from the three by four, stuck it in there. 
And we're gonna put a little tea bag in here. And this is gonna go back behind the belly band, just like that. And then there's room for a little spoon to go in right beside. And then a little honey stick. Again, I usually like to let that adhesive set up a little bit better. And then this is gonna go in this pocket. So, so the last thing we wanna do here is this is a little stamp from the component sheet and this is one of the little punch out hearts and we're just going to decorate our pocket with those just to kind of finish it off. I love um, text with a pattern. It's just a really neat finishing look and I actually want this to be a little bit on the diagonal and I'm going to use the polka dot side because I like it. So, done. And then this is just a really sweet valentine. And we'll set that aside. Now we'll bring in everything here. And I wanted to make this a shaker card, but we'll start with the base. Um, this is a, because I got all the stitching on here. This is four and three quarters by, okay, four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths of the really pretty wood grain pattern. And then I just matted that on slightly larger sizes of pink and black cardstock. And then I just did messy stitching around the edge. And the reason I did the stitching is it black is going to anchor all this pastel color, which is beautiful, but it kind of, everything kind of floats away. That adds a frame. So the eye knows where to focus. And then the next thing I did, this is again just a little scrap. This is five and an eighth by three. And I just put, you can see I just used little strips of black cardstock again to create that sort of frame. And this is going to adhere right in the center like a little belly band, just like that. Then I cut a couple of banner flags from the patterned paper. This one is three and a half by six. And I cut just cut the fishtail. And then this one is three and five eighths by six and a quarter. So we're actually gonna put the short one down first. And because you've got this belly band, you've got to do something to kind of even that out at the top. So I'm just going to stick a real quick piece of cardstock up there. And then adhere the one here. And then this is going to go right up to the top and about a half an inch over from that left hand side. Then we're going to take the next one and we're going to stagger it and I, let me see and i don't think we need to add chipboard because this is going to i've already leveled out the one that's laying over so we're going to overlap this and i want this one to come all the way down to the bottom just like this oops and i want to go over a little bit because i want it to be a half inch on each side about a half inch from the edge and that looks pretty good so I'm just going to take a couple of little pieces of chipboard and I'm going to level out these tails just like that because I need a firm platform for my shaker element okay so let's talk about the shaker element. This is a Primo resin frame, and the first thing I did was dry brush it with um, a ivory chalk paint. It was very, 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 very white, and I wanted it to be a little more antique. And then I spritzed it with a little mica spray that has a touch of gold in it, and then I just brushed um, some vintage photo over the decorative portions to make them pop a little bit. Then I cut a piece because the, this measures, I'll show you the back, because this measures three and a half 
by four and a half, I cut a piece of clear acrylic cardstock and adhered it to the back and let that dry thoroughly. Then I didn't have foam tape, so I just used pieces of chipboard, um, half inch pieces of chipboard, and I did a triple layer so that I would have room for my shakers. And those became, those stood in for the foam tape. I've got some coming, but it hasn't arrived yet. Then I cut a piece of the black stripe. Um, well, I filled the cavity. And then I built my little seam. This is the black stripe from the six by six pad. I fussy cut around the pretty three by four floral image. Then I punched out the romantic couple from the component sheet and glued that over the back. So you can see that. And that's my shaker element. And this is gonna go, before I put that down, I have a little heart shaped doily and I just want the lacy edge to show. So I'm gonna center this just like that. And then I'm gonna bring in my glue gun and I'm gonna adhere this shaker element in place. And I like to use, I'm pretty generous with the adhesive because these resin frames are fairly heavy. Make sure I'm straight and then just press that down really well. And that will set up very nicely. So there's that. Now, we want to bring in our flowers. And I'm working with Little Birdie Flowers. This is um, from AC Moore. And I think these are the Rosalind, and I think this color is Swiss Mocha, um, but they aren't labeled on the package. And then I tied a double loop bow with pearl pink taffeta ribbon, and I have a little Prima tassel. And as you can see, I just kind of twisted these rosebuds together, and we're just gonna adhere these. up against the frame, like that. Then I'm gonna come in with my leaves, and I'm gonna, they're a little bigger than I want them to be. And I should put my leaves down first, but that's okay. The glue is still warm so I can shift it. Put those leaves down. I'm working quickly because my phone is low on power. So there's those. Then I have another, let's just take this. And I, this is what I do. I just tear them and reposition them. And these are little birdie flowers. You can get these at AC Moore now. They're only in the stores. They're not online, can't get them online. But if you go into an actual AC Moore store, and there are 140 of them in the United States, you can get these now. And I just want this, probably should use the hot glue. So we will. There. That's good. And then, now I have these beautiful, these are called Candy and Sangria. These are their boxed roses. These are also from AC Moore by Little Birdie. And I wanna mix up the colors here because I just think mixing pink and red and that soft cocoa, I think it's just gonna make a really pretty arrangement. I'll deal with the glue webs later. And then let's bring in one of these really beautiful pinks. Right here. And then I want another one of these 
these lighter colors and I'm going to cut the stem pretty short. So that it will fit in right there. I love how vintage this is looking. This is looking really like what I wanted it to look like. So I'm pretty happy right now. Then another red. And here's a tip for working with florals. Change the direction. I mean, think about the way a rose climbs up a trellis. Some face one direction, some face another. Um, don't be afraid to change up the direction as you're laying in your florals. It gives it a really beautiful natural look. All right, that looks really good. And then I want to anchor this with this really beautiful, bold pink. So let me bring in my ribbon. Just like this. And I need a little bit of a leaf. Not a lot. Before I put my flower down, I'm going to add, oops. <laughs> Just get its tassel in there. Well, they're covered with glue webs, but there you go. That's the cover. So once this is set up and I've dealt with all the glue webs, I'll adhere this to the cover of our card. Isn't that beautiful? And the last thing I'm gonna do, and this just adds that extra layer of shabby chic, and I love to do this. If you've watched my channel, you've seen me do this lots of times. I'm just gonna dry brush a little bit onto all these flowers and leaves. Just to really take this romantic, shabby chic look all the way home. And you can see I hardly used any paint at all. And then just around the edges of my card, Same thing. There you have it. That's how I put this one together. I've got a couple little finishing touches, have to add the cover to the base, but that's basically how it goes. And hang around, I'll have still photos for you to see. And um, authentique, romance, beautiful collection for Valentine's Day. This is pretty enough. You could set it out on your mantle, I think. I just love it. So thanks for joining me.